I am telling you that I had the rudest, slowest and nastiest cashier today. Then might I suggest you stop using the self-checkout lane. <laughs> the mark of the beast is a topic of speculation between Christians and non-Christians alike. It is described in the book of Revelation as a mark that will be forced on all people and required for all financial transactions. Therefore all of your information, including your medical history and finances will be on this chip. Fear is about what the mark will be. Range from a chip implanted in the skin to a genetic modification. Recent breakthroughs in medical implant chips and RFID technologies have increased interest in the mark. And it's possible that the technology that we are seeing today represents the beginning stages of what may be used. But it will be a deliberate act of worshipping the beast, not something taken unknowingly. Having a medical or financial chip inserted into your right hand or forehead is not the mark of the beast. While these chips will be used to control your finances, the actual mark will be an end times identification, required by the Antichrist in order to buy or sell, and will be given to only those who worship the Antichrist. Many scholars of Revelation differ widely as to the exact nature of the mark of the beast. Some believe in an implanted chip, others in a microchip or a barcode that is tattooed into the skin, or simply a mark that identifies someone as being faithful to the Antichrist's kingdom. The events leading up to the mark of the beast taking place are described in 2 Timothy, chapter 3. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not love is a good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying their power, have nothing to do with such people. People will have a choice to make, and the consequences of that choice will be severe. It is better to accept Christ now, rather than face the peril of the coming Antichrist. You can carry your own sins into eternity or you can cry out to Jesus to absorb all of your sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God demonstrates his own love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the A, B, C's of salvation, admit you're a sinner, B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried and God raised him from the dead, C, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus is the only way to salvation. With that being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance in regards to salvation does result in works. To repent means to change your mind towards sin. Therefore it is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in your actions. In the scriptures, repentance results in a change of behavior. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God, in faith for salvation. It is written, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved.